So today we are in Poole in Dorset and I am really excited to show you this complete garden, outdoor kitchen and shelter transformation. Today I'm going to be talking you through everything about it and how we did it. where to start with this one when I arrived here it was earlier this summer this garden was a complete lawn at the back of the garden along there I think they had a whole load of bamboo plants there was an old fence running along there maybe some kids toys and things like that but the garden was just being completely disused um, there was just um, grass everywhere and I think there was plants on the side but but nothing at all in terms of cooking. Now, David, um, the owner of this property, is a huge barbecue fan. He's got lots of different um, barbecues and Kamado ovens. So he was really keen to build an outdoor kitchen and a shelter to house them all and somewhere for him to cook outside. So to start with, we came in, we had, um, we had the diggers in here, the dumper trucks. We dug all of this area out here that you can see from the post back. Um, and we took it down probably about 150 mil, six inches. Um, we then put in some type one, some hardcore, put that down the whole of this area and then whacked it down with a whacker. So we've got a nice solid surface. We then used these uh, porcelain slabs, these porcelain tiles. So these are called uh, Jupiter Grey, I think. They are 600 mil wide by 900 mil long, which is approximately two foot by three foot. Um, they were laid in this sort of brick effect along here and they look absolutely beautiful. So not only have we done this section here, but we also created this, it's almost like a bridge if you like, or a link that comes to here, to this other part of the patio, this outside the house that we replaced also. There used to be an old patio here actually, it was an old square sandstone or something like that, sort of two foot by two foot tiles. Um, but we took all of that up and we put this brand new patio down now so that it all flows and it all matches. Um, something else I'll just talk about while we're here as well, as you might notice that there's bits of ply running along here. So what we've actually done with this is we've left a channel underneath here. And what we are going to do is put some bifold doors in here. So those bifolds are gonna drop into that channel. So it's gonna be completely flush when you walk across there. And what the client's gonna be able to do is there'll be a door here, which will always open in and out so they can come in and out easily. But then these will Constantina back all the way to there and the same on the far side, they'll go all the way back over to there. I think we're gonna have five doors on each side, but what that's gonna do is in the winter, it's gonna completely enclose this whole area and they'll be able to keep it nice and warm in here. So once we'd got the, the type one down and we started putting the patio down, one of the first things we did was start putting these timber posts in to take to support the frame. So these are 150 by 150 mil posts or six by six posts. Um, they're concreted into the ground about a meter below ground and we've got six of those as you can see here. We've actually painted them an anthracite colour as well which I think looks really really good rather than leaving it as the standard timber colour. Um, when they were installed they were the same colour as the cladding that you can see around there. So we've literally got these timber posts in, we've created the frame and the roof. So this roof has an overhang here of about 600 mil, which actually matches the patio here and it's got a slope of about 50 mil or two inches that goes front to back and that provides a slope for us for all the water to go off at the back. Um, so if you want to come and have a look over here as well, um, when we were designing this process, obviously we started with one of our 3D designs. I was going back and forth with David. He decided he really wanted to have lots of light in here. So we actually integrated 
these roof lights. So we've got these four ginormous roof lights along here now. Now these are two meters by about a meter and a half and they are incredibly heavy. So we actually, we had these delivered to site and we built the, uh, we built the roof and we didn't quite realize how heavy they were gonna be. So with our joisting, we've literally got here, this whole section here has got about, I think seven joists all bolted together. And the same here, we've got about five or six joists bolted together um, and the same along there. On the sides of all of the roof lights, we have these huge timber joists to take the weight of it. So once we created, we trimmed out the roof ready for these, uh, ready for these roof lights. Our next challenge, if you like, was getting them up there. Now these probably weigh about a quarter of a ton each, so incredibly heavy. Now luckily, as luck would have it, next door to us there is a building site and they had a forklift on there. So luckily for us, they were kind enough to come over and we managed to put each of the roof lights onto the forklift. They forklifted up for us and we managed to put them on there. Um, Without that forklift, I'm not quite sure how we would have done it. It probably would have taken eight, nine, ten men to lift it up and get it up there. We were always going to have some sort of a cladding. I think originally on this side of the kitchen here, we were going to have like a, a slatted batten effect, you know, so that uh, so the airflow and everything could come through. Um, but David said he didn't want that. He wanted the whole thing enclosed, so it's completely watertight. So we've got this. This is a simple tongue and grooved um, softwood timber cladding. It's about 100 mil, four inches wide. Um, it looks really good. A later. Um, uh, adjustment or add-on to the to the build was to do it on the ceiling as well. Originally this was just going to be open joists and you could see the ply above it but David decided he wanted to have this cladding and I think it was a good choice. It works really well. This whole thing looks like a, it looks like a timber lodge or something like that, like an alpine an alpine lodge. Um, and you can see here on the reveals of the um, of the roof light as well. We've done those cladded as well. So it looks really really good. It also gives um, a good uh, way to hide these these down lights. So I'll talk about the electrics and the lighting and everything in a minute. Um, but David decided he wanted to have all of this lighting and hide it in there with these spot sight, and this was the perfect way to do it. So I'll talk you through the electrics that we've got here and, and the different setups that we've got um, because it's a little different to what we normally have. So because we are in an enclosed space here, we decided to put in some extraction as well. So you'll notice behind the Joe there, there's a, a stainless steel grill up there and behind the Napoleon up there, there's a stainless steel grill up there. So what we've done is behind the shelter on the outside, we've created ducting all the way around and all the way around to that corner there. And on the outside, we've got an inline fan that connects to both of those ducts. So when the, you know, the smoke's coming off here and the gas, everything's coming off here, all of the fumes, all of the smoke gets extracted and taken outside. That's gonna be especially important when the bifolds are on there and, uh, and it's all closed up. Um, in terms of the electrics, we've got a socket up there. So that is um, purely for uh, the rotisserie for the Joe, uh, which I know David uses quite a lot. It's also, I think he was talking about putting some speakers up there as well. So we've got a socket up there. We've got one up in the corner as well there for a socket. We've got a double socket over here. We've got another switch here. Ah, that's for the extractor. There you go. Um, We've got a switch there for the extractor, double socket over there, double socket over here. So we've got plenty of things, plenty of places to plug in. He's got a Sonos in the corner over there, um, deep fat fryer, um, chargers and things like that. So plenty of um, places to plug things in. So I've just got to chat to you about the lighting in here because originally we were going to have uh, three or four pendants, I think, along there, which was gonna light the area. Um, but um, David decided to go for some Philips Hue lights, uh, which were not something that we've done before. Um, so these are a, I guess, a smart, smart light. So these can be controlled with your phone. You can set the moods and you can set in each individual lights to have different colors, um, different settings. Um, and everything is controlled from your phone. So you can see that up here, I can't remember how many there were, I think maybe 24. Um, or 30 odd down lights up there, which can all be um, changed. So you could have that area down there where the seating is, that can be uh, as one setting, maybe like a, a soft light. And then you could have a brighter light down here for cooking if you wanted to. We've also routed out 
on the overhangs of all of the worktops, there's like a 10 mil um, line groove that's been routed out. And you can see now that the strips um, have been stuck under there. So it all shines down. So at night, it's going to look absolutely epic. the build of this one and how we actually built it so this one <clears throat> like a lot of our other ones was built using concrete blocks um, we had a it's, it's basically you can see the island here so you've got a u-shape uh, concrete blocks there we come along here and along here you might notice on this just how wide the actual kitchen itself is that's because this pizza oven that the client had already is, is nearly a meter deep. I think it is a meter actually. And this section here, he wanted to have as a really big bar area, um, not only to accommodate the Evo, which I'll talk about later, but so that he can take the pizzas and stuff from the oven straight here onto this big area here. And it looks absolutely amazing. Um, Underneath here, because this, we've got, you'll notice underneath here, we've got these open shelves, which you may have seen before on other ones, but because of the weight of this uh, pizza oven uh, and the span of this that we've got, we've actually got underneath here concrete lintels. So we've got three concrete lintels, one here, one there, and one there. Um, and it's the same over here. So that all of this weight is completely supported underneath. So that's in terms in, in that in terms of the, um, the the block work. After that, we then use these split face tiles. Now we've used these on some of our jobs before. This is a white quartz, I think it is. So it's a really nice white color. And if you get it just in the right light, it, it sparkles. It's got like a little sheen to it, which is really really nice. All of the corners we've mitered. It looks really smart. It looks modern, um, and it just it works really really well in this in this kitchen. So these worktops really are special. Um, these are called Cheyenne, I think, and it's made by a company called Leventina in the UK. I think they're actually imported from Spain um, and it is just absolutely stunning. So you can see it's like a, a dark marble, but it's got these white grains in it, marbly effect. It's just absolutely beautiful. It swirls, it looks like sand almost. Um, and you can see that this section here, this is actually a whole slab. So that is about three meters long along there by about 1.3, 1.4 meters across there. Um, so that is literally a whole slab. And you can see at the end where this Evo is, we've actually cut out a circle around there to drop it in there. And, and the whole point of this was, this area here was meant to be a real social space so that people could all sit around here, which is why we've got the overhang here as well, which we wouldn't normally do. But when cooking on, on here, you can have seats all the way around here. And it's just, it's a real focal point for the kitchen. Um, same again as well. So that runs all the way around. We've actually at the back there used, because we had some offcuts of this, We've put some little shelves along there, again, using the split face tiles and the granite, the offcuts of the granite on the top. I think that looks really, really good. That was just a, an added add on that, um, that we thought of later on, but it works really well. So it's now given them somewhere to put all of their rubs, their sauces, their salts, their oils, their drinks, candles, things like that. Um, it looks really, really cool. So onto the appliances now. This is the Napoleon Prestige Pro 665. This is a, a gas grill. It's got six burners. It's got four main burners, a rear burner, and it's got a smoker burner. Um, a fantastic piece of kit. I have done a review for this. I'll leave a link up there um, if you want to go and watch that. Um, we put lots of these in our kitchens. They're a really, really good grill. So this pizza oven is called a Fontana. Fontana are an Italian uh, manufacturer. Um, really, really good ovens. This one is ginormous. I mean. As far as domestic pizza ovens goes, I think this is about as big as it is. And it's heavy as well. <laughs> I know that because I helped lift it in. This is about a metre deep and probably not far off a metre wide as well. If you want to come and have a look inside, you can see how much space is in there. I mean, you could easily cook three, four pizzas in there at one time. 
or you could get three or four oven dishes in there as well. So that's a, that's a beautiful oven. Uh, another thing to note also, which wasn't part of the original plan, but was again, something that we added in later on, was putting in this flue, which was absolutely brilliant. So now this just goes, any smoke from there goes straight outside and it's extracted in there, no smoke inside. Coming along to here, you've got the Kamado Joe, the Big Joe. So this is a ginormous Kamado oven. Um, we have used these on one of our other um, kitchens as well. This will double up as a, a smoker, a slow cooker, a barbecue, a really, really versatile piece of kit. So this is a first for us and actually, I'd probably say one of the first in the UK as well. So this is called an Evo. Now, an Evo is it's basically a teppanyaki a hot plate. Um, so Evo were taken over, or I think Ar so Arga, who you might have heard of that make ovens and, and things like that, have got the rights to Evo in the UK now. Um, so this, I know, was one of the first ones, and David bought this himself online. So this is basically, I'm going to put this down here. <laughs> One ginormous teppanyaki plate. So that is probably 800 mil, what's that? Two and a half foot wide. Um, huge hot plate there. Now these are perfect for doing um, risottos and stir fries and things like that. Really, really good. I know um, there's a guy on YouTube called Sam the Cooking Guy and I think he uses this a lot, which is what I think inspired David to get this. Um, so this is, is gas. So you've got your, your gas um, knobs there. You've got the, the cupboards underneath. So you can access the gas. So you can turn that on. This gets really hot and you do all your frying and everything on there. So that's really, really good. I'd love to see some pictures. Um, once you started cooking on that, I'd like to see some of those and I'll share them with you when we get them as well. So what I really love about this kitchen as well is that it's been used a lot and it's lived in. Um, and so you, you can see on the walls, we've got these, these rails here with all of the utensils and all the things you need for cooking and barbecuing all hung up on there. You've got all your pizza utensils, you've got like the paddles over there all hung up. Um, behind me here, like I mentioned before, you've got all the shelving with all of the, um, all of the bits and pieces, cooking books over there, and you've got a magnetic rack up there with all the utensils over there. So it's, you know, it's everything is there where you need it. And under here, actually, I don't know if I mentioned before, but we've got these oak shelves in here. Um, and, and again, loads of storage there for pizza paddles serving up the pizzas. You've got, you probably can't see it, but there's a, a box there for putting all your pizza dough in and all the accessories, everything you need with baskets, wood underneath there, plenty and plenty of storage. Um, come over here as well. And this is the last thing that we'll look at is um, just like the dining area really. So this table is awesome. It's actually two tables, but these are fire pits as well. So you've got this L-shaped sofa, which is really comfortable. These tables here, you can probably see at least 10, 12, 15 people comfortably all around here. You've got enough things over there to cook on to feed everybody. Um, you've got a beautiful plant over there. Um, the lighting, everything just works really, really well. And I don't know if you noticed before, but we, there is actually a, a double fridge over here as well, um, which holds all the drinks. You've got the bins there. So that pretty much, your bar stool's there. Um, so your friends can sit there and chat to you while you're cooking. That is everything you need for an outdoor space. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as we have building it and, uh, and, and videoing it for you. If you want to see another video like this, I'll leave a link up there to a playlist for other ones that we do. If you want to see more pictures of things that we're currently up to, we have an Instagram and a Facebook account. So head over there and follow us on there. So thanks very much for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>